going on everyone this is greg with sportsrehabexpert.com and today we're going to be coming at you with 10 of my favorite plyometric activities not only for sports performance power output and vertical jump capabilities but also from an injury standpoint keeping your athletes more resilient and on the field of play so before we get into those 10 exercises if you could do me a favor and hit that like button so more people can view this video and get this access to this great information if you like the video be sure to comment below with anything else you'd like to see and be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on another video I have these jumps here listed in the general order that I like to pursue them with clients or athletes. The first one here is a snap down. The only purpose of this exercise is to get someone familiar with the eccentric loading, getting someone to be very adaptable, springy. It helps them feel and understand proper joint application and position to apply force. I mean, we want them to think about being like a bouncy ball or being springy uh, when they snap down so that they feel like they're loading their muscles and getting ready to explode back up. The second jump here is a pogo hop. Again, we're thinking about being springy on the feet, thinking about being like a bouncy ball off the ground, very quick. This here, we're working on the Achilles tendon mostly to create some of that stiffness that allows the athlete to create force. We're taking the knees out of the equation, we're taking the hips out of the equation. The knees will bend some here, but mostly this is just the ankle's ability to produce force and to create stiffness in that bouncy, in that bouncy ball effect coming off the ground. Now we're starting to actually get into some jumping variations. This is one of the first jumping exercises that I like to introduce, especially for a single leg component. We'll get into a bilateral jump here in just a moment, but what having a foot up on a box and jumping from the box does, it decreases the amount of force the athlete can uh, produce because they're starting from uh, that bottom position, 90 degree angles of the hip flexed. Um, so they're not able to jump quite as high. Also, the landing demands are a little bit less because they're uh, jumping from a box, so they're gonna land to a box and there's less eccentric demand that happens there. Um, but works on the ability to produce concentric power, concentric force, and apply force in a safe manner without much demand uh, to the eccentric component right now while they work on some of those other exercises that helps teach them how to eccentrically load the body effectively. Similar to the last exercise, the box jump from a box allows us to work on the concentric power application while also reducing the eccentric or deceleration demands of the exercise. Jumping to a box, there's going to be less force that needs to be absorbed. Uh, so it makes it a safer application, a safer exercise to perform. And you can degrade this depending on the athlete's skill level. Obviously, we don't want the knees flexing way up to their chest when they jump to a box. We want them to land in a nice solid position uh, when they jump to a box. It's not always about the height of the box. It's about what the landing looks like when they get to the box. The height of the box doesn't necessarily mean the athlete is jumping higher. It just may mean that they're able to flex their hips quicker or uh, get into a deeper squat position in the landing. So the height of the box is not the goal here. The purpose of the box is to reduce some of the deceleration demands um, while also giving the athlete a little bit of a target to shoot for because we know if we give the athlete a target, uh, they're more likely to produce more force because there's some competitive nature going on there with the athlete or the client. This next exercise is a tuck jump. It's performed from the ground. I may start as just performing one off uh, jumps at a time and then eventually perform continuous as shown with this exercise here. Uh, the idea here is now we're going from the ground. So obviously the uh, deceleration demands and the amount of force that has to be absorbed and then reproduce. So there's acceleration, deceleration, and then reacceleration that occurs with this jumping activity. Once the athlete has all of those things down, we can definitely start to progress and then challenge them a little bit further by adding some resistance to the exercise. Uh, this is one simple way that you can add a uh, resistance to a jump in an inexpensive, in an inexpensive fashion uh, is by attaching a resistance band to a dumbbell. Obviously that dumbbell needs to be heavy so it's not rolling across the ground and a square dumbbell uh, works a little bit better that have the octagon shapes, the dumbbell as opposed to a round dumbbell, it's less likely to roll or you could set up two heavy kettlebells on either side um, and just have two bands and crisscross it over top of the shoulder and perform resisted jumps in that fashion. You don't need to get an expensive piece of equipment to add resistance to a jump. 
This next jumping version is uh, it's another way to load resistance into the jumping pattern. Uh, it's not accommodating resistance like a band would be, but using a hex bar, it's a very uh, safe, very comfortable implement to be holding while you jump up and down. Uh, if we're actually jumping, we're probably not working on loading the athlete too much, uh, but depending on the uh, speed strength continuum, that you may want to load them more or less. As a side note, a heavier uh, trap bar deadlift working on velocity and bar speed coming off of the ground is an excellent exercise as well to be performing in conjunction with some of your plyometric exercises. Now we're getting into the depth jump variation. This is a very common one that you'll see for higher end plyometrics. Works on the ability to create force and apply force, use the stretch shortening cycle to uh, maximize a vertical jump capability. Puts a lot of shock to the muscle. And again, requires that athlete to act like a bouncy ball where they quickly hit the ground, apply force, and then re-accelerate back up into a vertical jump. Another version that we can do that is similar here that works that continuous jump fashion that really stresses the stretch shortening cycle of the athlete is to get a single leg rear foot elevated split squat jump. I like to emphasize um, kicking the heel up and still keep each subsequent landing optimal as far as the loading strategy goes but also as the force application goes for sport performance. Finally, we need to remember that all sports are not done stationary. Most team sports involve some type of horizontal momentum into a vertical jump displacement. So with that being said, we need to include some type of running jump into our variations. This is a big thing that I think is left out in many programs uh, and is involved obviously in sport, basketball, volleyball, uh, football. The athlete needs to understand how to transition horizontal momentum into a vertical force application so that they can jump while on the run. Now athletes will use two different strategies, so here we have two different videos, both a two foot and a one foot jump approach. In either scenario, that ability to transfer horizontal momentum to vertical force application to jump high off two foot or one foot, the ability to approach that jump is a very skill-based activity and it must be practiced in order to be learned and performed optimally and efficiently. A lot of times athletes are leaving a lot on the table because they do not know how to approach a jump efficiently, either from a two foot jump standpoint or a one foot jump standpoint. I know an argument can be made that a one foot jumper or a two foot jumper is somewhat genetic based and I would agree with that to a certain extent, but I'd also say athletes are still, again, leaving a lot on the table if they perfect the skill to be able to transfer force better, they're probably likely to jump a little bit higher uh, with both of these variations as well.